It is uh, just about to turn 20 minutes to uh, 9 o'clock on this Tuesday morning. And a very, very good morning to uh, Glenn Taylor, GT. G'day, Glenn. How are you, bud? Uh, good morning, Scotty. Great to be with you. I'm fantastic. Uh, it is great to have you as well in the studio, helping me out with a bit of sport. But, uh, uh, of course, talking about your big sporting event uh, held on the weekend, uh, the uh, Lake Argyle Adventure Race. Another successful one, I hear. Look, absolutely fantastic. Um, normally, the NT athletes make up a big portion of our uh, competitors, but obviously that's not possible this year. So the locals got right behind it, and we had a record 24 teams in the teams event. That's sensational. With... How many people in a team? Oh, uh, four to two. Okay. So I yeah. think there was a total of like 92 people in the teams event, some solos, and then 100 plus kids in the junior events. Oh, that's brilliant. So, they were getting involved as well. Oh, no, it's fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah, the kids just absolutely love it. Um, and we're seeing them coming through the ranks now. So just a fantastic weekend. Um, yeah, it's great to be back to some sort of normality here in Western Australia. Uh, now, um, Glenn, you've organised some fantastic um, uh, organi- uh, some events uh, around the Kimberley. Uh, how many Lake Argyle Adventure Races have you organised now? Oh, I think we're up to Lake Argyle Adventure Race number seven off That's the top brilliant. of my head. Yeah, going, uh, going very strong and building in numbers. And of course, um, uh, the um, COVID-19 uh, wasn't very kind to us uh, early in the year uh, with a lot of events uh, cancelled. Uh, the great Lake Argyle Swim was cancelled uh, earlier in the, in the year. How many of those have, uh, have you been running now? I think about the same. I think about seven. And yeah, look, really unfortunate timing there. It was one month. We were ready to go. We got the t-shirts. We got everything ready to go. Yeah. Had a great uh, DJ booked as well, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> I was really, I had a fantastic time last year. It was sensational. And um, I was really looking forward to, uh, uh, to getting up there and doing it again. And of course, all the competitors must have been uh, just heartbroken. Uh, they were, they, it is a great event that people walk around with the smiles. I mean, they, they, they look like they're so uh, tired. You know, they've just done an enormous uh, amount of swimming uh, in, in fresh water, which is not as buoyant as salt water. Uh, they look exhausted, but they've got huge smiles and they've just had a fantastic time. So you must be very, very proud of that Lake Argyle swim, you and your team. Oh, look, the Lake Argyle committee does a fantastic job. Uh, it's really well organised. We're getting um, higher profile bands and MCs to do the presentation. Yeah. So it's um, 700 people is at the sit-down dinner. So it's the largest sit-down dinner in the Kimberley. And, yeah, look, and the venue sells itself. Once yeah, you're in the does. expanse of uh, Lake Argyle, blue fresh water, no, yeah. no sharks, no stingrays, no yeah. singers. Um, just, the then, old, just the odd uh, freshwater crocodile. Just the odd freshwater crocodile, which is always <laughs> a, a good talking point. No, they love it. Is. Yeah. Certainly is now, um, and um, we were talking before. Uh, tentatively, we've uh, we've got the date for next year for the Lake Argyle Swim. Yeah, so all those competitors who were entered in the twenty twenty swim have all rolled over. So we've got the full. Oh, uh, that's field. fantastic! Yep, nobody's we've, pulled out. That's brilliant. We've kept them uh, all in the twenty twenty one event. Um, with a little bit of water to go on the bridge between now and then, but yes, the first Saturday in May, every May. So uh, this year will be the first of May. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so. Uh, Keep your ears open for uh, next year's Lake Argyle swim, the 1st of May. Now, um, GT, getting back to the Lake Argyle Adventure Race, it's a multi-sport event. Um, obviously, you've got to have a few fit people. So the first leg is the swim. How many uh, k's are they swimming? Yeah, so they kick the day off at 7 o'clock with a two-kilometre swim. Uh, <laughs> a... Quite a thrashing of arms and bodies in the yeah, water there. Wake everybody up. Yeah, and look, it was quite windy um, this year, so the competitors had to battle a headwind on the way out and then a tailwind coming back in around the last boy. Um, They did very well. We had a very sharp time of uh, just under 28 minutes this year for a 2K swim, which is um, really fast. Well done. And uh, out of the water, um, but still close to the water, they're jumping onto the... um, and then what are they, um, uh, skis, are they? Kayaks? Uh, they sit on top, yeah, sit on yeah. top kayaks and yeah. they're off on a seven kilometre paddle. Yeah. Seven kilometre paddle and that's on the Lake Argyle as well. Yep, yeah. that's on Lake Argyle. Again, you know, a bit worried about the breeze there, but uh, no white caps, just a strong breeze. It was, uh, it was, a, it was a windy old, um, and it's been windy uh, quite, a, quite a few days uh, recently. Uh, since Thursday, been, uh, yeah, it's amazing winds uh, around the area. Uh, so they finished the seven kilometre paddle uh, and then uh, seven kilometre run for the third leg. Yeah, so then fortunately those windy conditions kept the temperature down a little bit for, yeah. the, the, for the run. So seven kilometre run, mostly um, cross country 
out to the, the bluff uh, opposite the resort there and back to the resort. So a lot of single trail. Um, and that was, yeah, that was a fantastic run leg. Lots of good feedback. That's a slightly new course for this year. And then uh, top it off, they finish it off with a mountain bike, 18 kilometre mountain bike on the uh, amazing Lake Argyle Yeah, so if, if their legs aren't uh, sore enough after a run, uh, you put them onto a mountain bike for 18 kilometres uh, for, for the fourth leg. That's the one. You've got to test them out. Um, so, yeah, most of the athletes are around about out there for four hours. Wow. Uh, four hours plus for the solos. Okay, so, and have you got, some, uh, you got some names of some winners? Yeah, so look, in the teams, it was the Radland Trio, um, anchored by Steve Sunderland with a great run and, and faster that they cycle. Oh, he loves it, doesn't he? He loves yeah. those multi-sport events. And uh, yeah, some great efforts across the teams. Um, they're not all elite athletes. A lot of uh, the teams are made up of people giving it a go, and it's great to see. So um, well done to all those teams. But I guess the, you know, the athletes that are really out there for the longest time are the, the solos. Um, we thought it'd be a very tight competition in the uh, male silos, and in fact it was only five minutes between uh, one of the young guns in town, Tommy O'Brien, but the experience of Paul Mock, uh, previous winner of the solo adventure oh, yeah, race, right. showed right. through. Yeah. He, uh, on, you mocky. he came from second place halfway through and uh, pulled it back with a very solid cycle and paddle to to uh, take the overall win. He's a very fit bloke. And, yep. uh, yeah, well, I suppose you have to be fit to, to do... Uh, what a total of 34 kilometres in a multi-sport uh, event. Yeah, and a big shout out to the fittest lady in town, without a doubt, Katie Geimer, yeah. who has yet again backed it up with a win in the solo female. So well done, actually. Uh, to Katie. You, 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 can, uh, you can see her out on Lake Kalanara on a regular basis, paddling around and running around and doing all that sort of stuff. Good on her. Congratulations. Uh, and um, you'll be uh, doing it all again next year, I should imagine. Yeah, we are. So uh, after that... Yeah, after the chaos of the teams and the solos, uh, it gets even more chaotic when we go on to the junior events. We have an enticer for the uh, slightly older kids and then the junior challenge around the resort, which includes a slip and slide, uh, uh, over and unders, rounds, uh, through to tyres. It's just a fantastic event. The kids love it. Uh, big shout out to Nick Tierney, who's um, one of the key organisers for that event, and all yeah. the parents that helped out there. So, oh, that's, so. A, that's a great. Uh, that's good. So we're talking little ones here. Yeah, six to eleven years of Brilliant. age, all around the Brilliant. resort. They pedal their little hearts out, run their little hearts out, and uh, finishing on the slip and slides a, a highlight for them. Oh, that's. I would love to see the little kids uh, six years old um, competing in this event like that. It'd be just sensational to watch. It, it is, and look, they, the kids that were doing that six or seven years ago have come through the entire yeah, and exactly. stepping up to the teams event. Um, I don't think it'll be long until we see some of those kids that started on the slip and slide uh, don't going solo in the main event. So that's what it's all about. It's fantastic. Hey, GT, are you getting um, interest uh, for the Lake Argyle Adventure Race uh, further afield, like you are with the um, with the Lake Argyle Swim? Yeah. So traditionally, um, you know, forty to fifty percent of our competitors were coming across from the NT. And um, even this year, we had some athletes up from Perth yeah, brilliant. that uh, read about it, knew about it, and made their way up here to be part of it. So, yeah, absolutely, it's getting a similar reputation as as the swim, and uh, it's certainly building uh, as rapidly. Well, you're doing your uh, your little bit for um, for East Kimberley tourism, that's for sure. Not a little bit, quite an uh, extensive bit, which is fantastic. Uh, the Lake Argyle Adventure Race. Uh, now, I heard lots of spectators up there over the weekend as well. Yes, yeah, look, the parents love watching the kids run around. Yeah, so really good numbers. Uh, it was uh, one of, if not the busiest weekend for Lake Argyle Resort. Of course, they have been terribly impacted by the lack yeah. of round Australia travellers. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they were fantastic um, catering for us and, and still being part of the event um, in a very, very tough year for all our tourism operators. Well, uh, you know that uh, you can come in and talk about uh, any of your great events, uh, Lake Argyle Adventure Race. We'll look forward to having you in the studio for the Lake Argyle Swim. But you are here uh, as well uh, to help me out with a bit of sport. Uh, I know you're a big fan of, uh, of AFL. We're going to have a look at AFL now. Um, and you're pretty handy with the old footy tips too, I understand. Uh, and uh, also uh, a bit of a, um, uh, a umpire as well. Help yeah, out. look, I'd love to umpire the local footy league. Uh, again, that's been impacted this year. We've just got the four Horse Creek teams running around at the moment. But I think the grand final's in a week or two. So that's very exciting for local AFL. And, of course, in the uh, in the AFL, it's just great to have some uh, competitive sport to watch during these COVID times. And uh, been really loving the AFL. Certainly is. So uh, just having a quick look at uh, round 14 uh, that was played. 
Uh, of course, um, back on Thursday, Essendon beat the Hawks and uh, Richmond uh, had a win over the Eagles, and that was on Thursday. Friday's game, um, the Cats took their time, but they eventually uh, beat Western Bulldogs. Uh, in the last few minutes, uh, they came over the top of the Bulldogs uh, for a win on Friday. Uh, on Saturday, uh, there were three games played. Uh, Port Adelaide uh, had a big win over Sydney Swans. Uh, the Giants beat Fremantle. And um, uh, I thought a bit of an upset to um, Melbourne having a win over uh, St Kilda. A three-point uh, win over uh, the Saints. Melbourne playing pretty good at the moment. A good coach. Sunday there were two games. There was the uh, Collingwood uh, team beating uh, Carlton. That's always a, uh, a passionate game. Collingwood and Carlton. And uh, the Suns had a big win over uh, North Melbourne. And of course, then the Crows and Brisbane Lions had a bye. Uh, now looking at this round, uh, round 15, which uh, starts off tonight, GT. Yes. Uh, and, uh, well, it's a pretty safe bet to put your money on uh, the Hawks over the Crows, although um, it would be nice, but no, that's my team, GT. The Crows. Oh, the well, they are coming off the bye, so if they've <laughs> ever got a chance to win a game this season, this has to be it. The Crows have to be fresh. Hawks played not that long ago, so it's your only chance, Scotty. Yeah, well, yeah, well uh, we've still got a couple of games to go, but, um, yeah, they, are, uh, they haven't had a win all season. Uh, one of the longest losing streaks of any team in the AFL. Uh, the Crows, uh, they're playing at Adelaide Oval, so they've got a hometown advantage, but they haven't been capitalising on that much. Uh, give the ball to, um, to uh, young um, Shane McAdam. He can kick a few more goals. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, yeah, the Hawks and the Crows uh, kicking off tonight. Uh, West Coast also um, being played tonight uh, at the Gabba. Uh, the West Coast taking on Essendon uh, at the Gabba. So um, the Crows this afternoon, twilight match sort of thing, and uh, the Crows in, uh, the, were Eagles and Essendon into the evening at the Gabba. So that's uh, two games tonight. Uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, September the 2nd, Richmond and the Dockers are meeting at uh, the Gold Coast. Thursday, there's a couple of games, the Swans and Melbourne, and uh, uh, the Giants are uh, playing Carlton on Thursday. And then on Friday, um, Brisbane Lions and Collingwood. And there are uh, quite a few uh, teams sitting it out for around 15 by the Suns, the Kangaroos, Port Adelaide, uh, the Western Bulldogs, the Cats, and John Cats, and um, St Kilda, all uh, sitting out for round 15 by some good games this week. What's your team, GT? Uh, well, at the moment we're playing like, uh, I heard them called Witches Hats the other day, North Melbourne, as uh, Brisbane Lions just ran around them last weekend. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah well, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're not, uh, um, not doing um, as badly as the Crows, but they're uh, still not doing... Uh, uh, too well there. Um, yeah, you're second, second on the ladder. At least you've got a few points. We haven't got any points, but uh, uh, you're having a bit of a um, uh, run of losses like the Crows. So. Yeah, now, uh, big in, I need to see the teams. Josh Kennedy, uh, I'm not sure if he's back for the, the Eagles tonight after his concussion last week. That yeah. was certainly a big part of how Richmond beat them. Yeah. Uh, with uh, Kennedy going off in the first quarter with his concussion. So he'll be beginning. West Coast just have to win in Queensland. Uh, they're getting a bit of a reputation as the home team winners only yeah yeah and yeah well that's exactly right and, and um, they were so dominant at um in, in you know, at home uh, and also you were um, sort of failed a bit when they went uh, somewhere else but um yeah they're taking on Essendon so that should be a good game uh, tonight uh just quickly having a look at the uh, top eight Port Adelaide still uh, are up the top four points ahead of uh, uh Geelong uh, Brisbane Lions in third, Richmond in fourth, West Coast Eagles are sitting in fifth, uh, and uh, then uh, Collingwood in sixth, uh, St Kilda in seventh, and uh, Melbourne in eighth place. And um, that uh, eighth position uh, is percentage points with um, GWS Giants and the West Coast uh, and the Western Bulldogs. So um, that's a um, uh, Interesting area, that um, uh, bottom of the top eight. Uh, anybody can sort of zip in there, um, except for the Crows. <laughs> there's no way that they're going to win the grand final this year. No way. Uh, and uh, they, there's big talk, the grand final possibly going to the Gabba. 
Yeah, look, uh, they're, they're the favourites at the moment they're because the of what the yeah. Queensland government has done for yeah. AFL this season, yeah. and they probably deserve to be. Yeah. Uh, the point of contention, of course, uh, Optus Stadium in Perth being a 60,000-person stadium, possibly without restrictions. They could have 60,000 there. The best they can do at the Gabba, I think, is 30, but probably with the restrictions, 10. So, um, yeah, interesting times for the AFL. I think they're right to keep delaying and delaying to see how things are. Uh, Go with uh, all the COVID things. Um, four, what, four or five weeks away until yeah. you know, we have to worry about finals. Now, one more thing with the AFL I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, did you see any of the goals of the year uh, for round 13? The voting was happening during the week uh, and it's been announced. We were actually lucky enough to have two Kimberley um, players, or uh, fellows from the Kimberley, uh, in the round 13 uh, goal of the year. And... Um, uh, Shane McAdam got 22% of the vote, but young Irving Mosquito in his first game playing for Melbourne in his second goal, his first goal wasn't too bad, but his second goal was an absolute cracker and he took out the uh, round 13 goal of the year. If you haven't had a look at it, uh, make sure you go to the AFL website, uh, right down the bottom, the uh, goal of the year and check out Irving Mosquito's goal. It's a cracker uh, and um, he's going to be a great player to watch. Oh, look, he certainly captured the moment in that uh, he, NT he, match. Uh, he, was, he played up at the NT, didn't the crowd go wild? And as well. justifiably. They loved it, yeah. yeah, so perfect timing. Absolutely loved it. He got uh, nearly 60% of the vote to uh, give him uh, round 13 winner, Irving Mosquito, 59.7% of the vote. So well done to him. We're going to keep an eye on him. Uh, a Kimberley player. and um, uh, Now, a couple other things... Um, uh, you know your sport. You were mentioning the Tour de France started yesterday. Yeah, so, so uh, look, uh, 60 days late. Normally it's in uh, June, July time. They've delayed it because of COVID. France mm -hmm. is still having quite a bit of a problem there. But there's two Australians in this year's event. And uh, last night in the sprint finish, uh, Caleb Ewan, one of the Australians, won uh, a stage. He won fantastic. three stages in last year's event. Um, he was uh, he was expected to do quite well. Uh, it's a big sprint finish before they head to the mountains. He's a, he's a good sprinter. And yeah, timed his uh, sprint perfectly into the headwind and won last night. So congratulations. We love our cycling over here, Australians, don't they? It's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a, they've always done very well uh, uh, in, uh, in Olympics and track cycling. Yeah, look, both competitive. And during COVID, bikes have sold out across Australia. So right? there's a massive shortage of push bikes. Obviously, everyone in shutdown mode looking for a bit of extra exercise. Yeah. Um, making the most of the empty roads right now. And, yeah, there's a bit of a wait for a bike in Australia, which is fantastic for the bike industry. Amazing. Well, you probably even know with that, with, um, with um, your involvement in mountain biking and riding and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, the Tour Down Under down in South Australia is a huge event. That's uh, sort of you uh, being a person that um, has evolved events. You would have been watching how uh, Tour Down Under has, uh, has evolved. It's, uh... Yeah, and look, there was a long-distance cycling event uh, this weekend in Darwin, um, and it was record numbers. So people are just keen to get out there, get out on their bikes, and uh, yeah, look, um, hopefully we can retrofit our cities for more cycle lanes yeah. and less cars. Well, we've definitely got a country that um, uh, sets itself up well for bikes. Um, a bit like Holland, you know, we're nice and flat in most areas. Uh, that's pretty good for bikes. Uh, but, but that's uh, well done, the Tour de France. No doubt we'll be talking about that um, next week when we um, start uh, uh, getting closer to the um, to the final run down the Champs-Élysées for the winner of the Tour de France. But well done to Caleb, uh, Caleb Ewan. Uh, the uh, other thing I uh, wanted to uh, just quickly mention before we talk about golf, and we've got lots to talk about in golf, uh, the um, uh, the round ball, the beautiful game, the football. Um, well done to Sydney FC. Yes, looking an interrupted A League season. Uh, the grand final was on the weekend. Um, Melbourne City, I don't think had won previously. They yeah. went in with pretty high hopes. Uh, in extra time, a one nil win to um, Sydney. I think that's here. Is that their fourth? Uh, Certainly not their fourth? first. No. <laughs> They've been think, quite successful. They have. They have. I think it's their fourth. Maybe their fifth title. I think fourth. I read uh, and. Uh, what about the uh, Lionel Messi deal? Um, $1.1 billion from Lionel Messi to go leave uh, Barcelona to uh, go to Man City. Yeah, look, that's uh, the debt what of some sort small of country around the world, world isn't it? about here. <laughs> $1.1 billion uh, deal. Uh, but he is um, uh, the best footballer on the planet. Uh, and, uh, 
uh, won the award uh, for quite a few years in a row, Lionel Messi, but uh, $1.1 billion, wow. That's some serious money. They'll be looking for uh, payback through uh, lots of goals, I imagine, over the course of that deal. All right, now, uh, GT, we'd love to see you out on the golf course on a regular basis, swinging a club like a, like, like a good uh, ex-cricketer that you are. Uh, but we haven't seen you out there, but uh, uh, we're going to talk about golf now and, um, in particular, the uh, Grey Championships, which has been run over... Uh, well, the last couple of months, um, we played round six on uh, uh, on Sunday, and uh, congratulations to um, oh, somebody who would have bowled to you a few times. Uh, you're a, um, a uh, pretty handy bowler for uh, Lakeside. Well, a pretty handy bowler for Kununurra team, and he's a very handy golfer. A big congratulations to Troy Puckridge, who is our club champion and the A grade. Um, uh, club champion and the A-grade golfer. Uh, his name goes up in, in gold at the, um, at the clubhouse. Uh, well done to him and uh, uh, he won the A-grade. Uh, also congratulations to Wade Mincham who uh, uh, came through in the last round to have a 79 to take out uh, B-grade against Lindsay Innes. They had to do a bit of a, uh, um, a playoff for, the, for, the, uh, for the, the winner of that. Uh, but of course he uh, he got a 79, equaled Lindsay, and then they went and had a playoff, and then beat Lindsay uh, to be uh, B grade champion. Uh, also, welcome, uh, uh, well done to grade uh, the C grade champion, uh, Hutchy Damien Hutchinson, who has been one of the standout golfers of the year. He takes out C grade, and also uh, and uh, somebody who's only been playing for a short time, but it's great to see him take out D grade. Congratulations to Luke Watson, who uh, took out D grade. Uh, and for A grade for the ladies, well done to Sandy Cocaine. And for uh, C grade, uh, well done to Erin Whitaker. Who, um, uh, and their names will all go up in gold at the clubhouse. Uh, and uh, they'll be bringing their grandchildren back in years to come to see how good they were at golf back in the day. And, uh, you know, you can't buy that GT, uh, your name in gold. You can't buy it. The only way you can do it is win it. Uh, some great golf played. And congratulations uh, also to... Um, uh, uh, who got the, uh, uh, the mug? I can't remember who got the mug now. Uh, but that was played on the weekend as well. I had a bit of a blank. Uh, so that's sport. Uh, GT, thank you very much for coming in and talking to us about uh, your favourite sports, of course, uh, the Lake Argyle Adventure Race. Uh, we look forward to catching up um, just before the Lake Argyle swim, and we'll talk about how that's all going. And, uh, of course, that'll be um, in uh, uh, on May the 1st next year. So we'll get you in before then and, uh, and talk about how that's all going. And also, thanks very much for filling in for... Uh, uh, for chips and talking sport with us. Great to be with us, Scotty. Very happy to talk sport. Well done. Glenn Taylor is the uh, organiser of the Lake Argyle Adventure Race, another successful adventure race on the weekend, and also uh, one of the main uh, um, men behind uh, him and his team, behind the Lake Argyle Swim, which is a uh, fantastic event held uh, in Kununurra every year. And we'll be looking forward to um, that one in May. And that is uh, sport. You can catch us on uh, on Facebook with this, and uh, uh, we'll do it all again with chips uh, next Monday. And uh, if you'd like to come in and talk to us about your favourite sport, we would love you to come on in and uh, and talk sport with us. Uh, get in contact with chips and uh, come in and uh, talk about your favourite sport. We're going to go to the news. We are running late as we always do when we talk sport. We could talk about it for hours. GT's here. Thanks very much, GT. We'll catch up with you next time. We are uh, off off to the news. 6WR. Warren Gary Radio is the Aboriginal...